Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Sarah Thompson about One of Us is Lying, which is on Peacock. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. I've always been a fan of the like who done it kind of like mystery, like who's the one. How exciting was it for you to just be part of a project like this, knowing that kind of genre and that kind of um, formula is very popular and excites a lot of people? Yeah. I mean, who doesn't like a little bit of suspense? I was very excited. I mean, I think it's a very well rounded, everyone will love it show. And like, yeah. Big fan of the genre. Yeah. It's a binge show, you know? You can sit and just binge <laughs> it because each episode you're like, oh, wait. Oh, no, it's this person. It, it's one of those, it's like it's a conver- It's like a binge sh- series, but it's like a conversation series. Like, it's one of those shows that, like, you'll be with friends at work and be like, so who do you think it is? It's, it's yeah. Exactly- <laughs> yeah, you can get into fights over that stuff. Pretty much. That <laughs> <laughs> which is amazing. Um. Your character is very interesting. It's There's a lot of arc going on. What was it like kind of playing a character like this? And for my viewers that don't know, talk a little bit about your character specifically. Okay, so yes, I play Vanessa. And Vanessa is, for lack of a better term, the queen bee of this high school of Bayview. And she thinks everyone's there for her. It's like the, the, the halls are her runway. Yep. She doesn't care about school. She cares about what she looks like. She's very much focused on her outward appearance and the drama of it all and anything she can get her hands on, she she will spread like wildfire. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so playing a character like that is fun because you kind of get to stir the pot. Mm-hmm. And yet I find her to be quite innocent in a lot of ways. I find her to be very you know she has her secrets and she'll tell everyone secrets but she's not really she ha- she says a lot of hurtful things but she's she's coming from a hurt place i think it's like you know what it's funny you say that because the, the misunderstood like she's misunderstood in a lot of ways but it's funny because you know for like there's a lot because like people could like paint your character in some ways like the villain oh my god she's the worst right yeah. but it's like you could have that argument with like the fact that your character is like misunderstood and stuff where she's coming from, but like some, some characters in TV these days are just like bad people. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah, (laughs) definitely. And she could have easily been that. It was very important to me to make her likable somehow because playing the villain, I mean, who doesn't want to play the villain? It's the most fun thing to play. You get to justify all of these bizarre actions that you get to play um so it's very important to me to find something about her that's likable not yeah. only the viewers but to her friend group like it was very important to me to be like why are we friends like why do you just not just because you know we're popular but like what's the one thing you like about me even if we don't get to see it on tv you know do you think i'm funny you know like do you do you get a kick out of me and i think that's what it was with vanessa is that no matter how outrageous she was, people would get a kick out of her because she just never stopped. Oh, absolutely. I find with this show specifically, it's interesting in terms of the different kind of the different kind of times, time frames of like hype and excitement. Because I remember like I've interviewed on Elisa Cochran and Barrett Carnahan for yeah. Cobra Kai on this show. And I remember mm-hmm. when it was like the One of Us is Live was announced. There wasn't trailers or release dates. And like the announcement like people were excited about the show and everything. Do you still find it weird as a storyteller of these kind of not weird, but like it's, it's a, it's an interesting climate in terms of like the different steps, right? Like it gets announced, people want it, but it's like, you might not have shot it yet. You know what I mean? But like, it's out there on the internet and then it's actually out like three, four months later. Like what, like what's that like for you? Like it's interesting, right? It's very interesting. This show specifically was a very long drawn out process. We shot the pilot two years ago. Oh, wow. Um, And then we had COVID to blame for the postponing the show. Mm -hmm. And so we all got to sit with these characters for so long and we became this little family. 
And then when we found out we got picked up, we were like, this is amazing. But we had no idea when we were going to shoot because yep. we were all locked in our apartments. And then um, we found out we were going to go to Cameron, New Zealand. And it was the most exciting, but we still had to wait, you know, not this person is, an, is announced yet. This person's not announced yet. So we can't be like posting this and that. Meanwhile, we were like, but everyone knows that we're doing this show. Everyone knows from the pilot two years ago that we're all together, right? So yeah, it's crazy. And then it finally comes out and then it's out in the States, but it's not out in Canada. It's not out here. So it's crazy. I mean, everyone gets to see the show at different times. It's interesting. Um, you're 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 Canadian, like you said. You know, you're in Vancouver. Um, is it? I I still find it really interesting too, because I'm Canadian as well. But I still find it interesting that there's so many projects that are U.S. projects on big networks that are like filmed in Canada. Like Vancouver has always been a big spot. You're seeing yeah. Toronto is is getting a lot bigger and everything. It's a pretty cool feeling, and but a bit deceiving too, where you know. It's not, like they're they're filming Canada. Some actors are Canadian and everything, but they're like they're American shows on big networks. It's pretty. It's a pretty exciting thing for Canada as a country. It is. I'll never understand it, but I love it. <laughs> I prefer it, and like, I'll be on your show. Sure. <laughs> Um, you worked on some some really cool movies in the past as well, in kind of the horror and thriller genre as well. We talked about you worked on a movie with Richard Harmon, which yeah. we talked about up there, um, with Bella Thorne and everything. Um, what do you like specifically about the thriller slash horror genre, whether it's TV or film, Sarah? Because I feel like it's come a long way, and I feel like it's arguably one of the greatest genres right now, um, yeah. in in content right now. Yeah, I mean. I'm definitely afraid of watching it. Yep. I will, but it terrifies me. I don't mm. know why. I know it's not real, but I still can't get these images out of my head when I go to sleep. Yep. So that is one part of it. I love to do it because there's such a physicality to it all, you know, whether it's getting tugged down a flight of stairs by some demon yeah. Or, you know, or, you know, the running, the screaming, all of it. I love the physicality of it. I used to be a dancer. And I think that, like, it becomes, especially when there's special effects, it becomes very specific, you know. Yeah. It becomes choreography. It's like a dance. You have to hit your mark. You have to run. You have to do all of this at the same time as, you know, crying your eyes out because you're being chased by, like, a ghost monster. Yeah. I know. And it's oh. it's it's pretty crazy. It It's also interesting, too, because... Different, you were kind of alluding to that a little bit. Like, there's different ways to scare people these days. Like, obviously, the traditional kind of tropes of like jump scares and the gore, they're there and they're needed. Mm -hmm. But we've seen over the years as well, people are scary. Like, society yeah. is scary, right? Everything's scary. It's scary out there. <laughs> Which is crazy. Sarah Thompson is a storyteller. Sarah Thompson is on One of Us's Line, which is on Peacock, streaming now on Peacock. You're a storyteller. That's what you do. It's an exciting time because there's a lot happening in storytelling. What excites you about being a storyteller? I think what excites me about being a storyteller is that the possibilities are so endless. Yep. Like it's really this world that we exist in where anything can happen. Mm -hmm. And everything is possible yep and that's my favorite part that's the world that you want to be a part of yeah that that's a very simple answer right yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, like i mean there's anything is possible you know in your everyday life you can't you go with the you you roll with the punches absolutely in the movies whether you're telling them or you're writing them or you're portraying them you can do whatever you want Oh, 100%. In terms of like prepping for a role and getting in there and shooting it and everything, do you – obviously, there's like maybe a specific mindset for each project that doesn't change for Sarah Thompson, but does it really depend on the role and the project in terms of like – maybe not the preparation because obviously the preparation is always going to be different. I'm talking about kind of the mindset and like yeah. whether – they're like routines, like all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it depends on the project, right? So much. Yeah. It depends so much on the project. Um you know, there's more physical characters where you're having to, you know, get to the gym and train and really, like, figure that part of it out. Someone like Vanessa, it was – I've never had a process like that before because mm -hmm. there wasn't too much – you know, the show is quite serious, but the story she's telling 
for most of the episodes is quite comical. She yep. loves it. You know, she's not in a very she, when the cam when when we catch a glimpse of her, she's never really in a low moment. She's always turned on. And so there it wasn't a very sad kind of a lot of other people on the show were in like their it was harder for them because they were dealing with a really intense storyline. Whereas for me, I was having the time of my life. I, you know, each thing you play re affects your life differently. Yep. And so for Vanessa, I did my own makeup and hair for this character. And the wardrobe and all that was the most important thing. Like I, I couldn't get into character until my shoes were on, you know, yep. like until I'm wearing like six, six inch heels and like walking through the halls, then it's like, okay, I, I, I remember now what I'm doing. So a lot of the physicality came from like the way I did my hair and makeup and all that. Cause that's what she would do. Oh, absolutely. And we, we mentioned that, you know, you're a storyteller. That's what you do. And a lot of storytellers, you know, like yourself, because of the fact that you're on some amazing shows and the access and the global access, you do have, you do establish pretty big followings on social media because people are able to kind of tune in and connect from all around the world and everything. Um, I'm sure you don't think of it as much. And I feel like it kind of goes without saying, but the responsibility aspect of the fact that you have this big platform with people from all over the world, I'm sure that always comes to mind in terms of like what you post, when you post and everything. How important is it to never turn that aspect of it off, the responsibility component of social media? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you don't think about it. Sometimes you just post something and you're like, oh, so many people just saw that. Yeah. And you're just goofy and you're just like, oh. But then, you know, I don't take any any of it too seriously. I think that's really important. I'm very lucky that it doesn't really, you know, doesn't drive me crazy. I don't sit and think about a post for too long. Or I really just want, when I do feel like posting, I'll post. And when I don't, I won't. And I think that it's important for these people to get to see a real authentic version of you. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, you know, if you're not in the mood, it's better to just do nothing because... Sometimes we sometimes we put things out there when we're in a mood and we're like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. But I know? feel like those posts, though, and like, I, you know, we, we all we're not going to name names and everything, you know, like it's like when you post things on social media, like there's a very good chance that Sarah Thompson is the one posting that story on Instagram. Right. <laughs> there's a few people <laughs> that you're not sure sometimes, like if it's right. actually that person. Right. Them, yeah. For sure. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, I think it's important too with, you know, with doing the shows that you want to connect the fans mm -hmm. with the cast as much as possible. And I know this is the biggest social media campaign I've ever been a part of. The one of us is lying and I'm not even that big a part of it. So like. The promotion was massive, like from massive. the, like, ma like massive. <laughs> Everywhere, everyone, you know, I've never been really a part of a show where I'm like, oh yeah, this show, everyone's like, oh yeah, I just saw something on that. Like every, without fail, that's the reaction. So it was cool throughout the whole thing. We knew, you know, we knew it was going to be a whole campaign. We knew that we were doing a bunch of behind the scenes stuff and you just, it, you never quite realize that it's when they say it's going to be everywhere. It's, it's really going to be everywhere. The access, I think, look, I've been having these conversations with people where we're having like a debate on my show about like, Obviously, there's like a lot of components of why we're in like the incredible like golden age of content right now. And people say, you know, the writing's amazing, the way it looks, like the cinematography is amazing, and it's all those things. But my big thing and my big takeaway is the access, like the global access. Access, like you have yeah. fans like all over the world, like instantly, uh -huh. which is incredible. incredible. So that's really exciting as well. Sarah, well, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn to the chat about one of us is lying. This was great. Thanks for having me. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one of us is lying at Peacock. I believe, don't know if it's, it, it's going to be in Canada on the W Network. Yeah, I think it just came out yesterday. Yeah, which is amazing. One. So they're going to be able to see that. Because you mentioned like it wasn't available right away in Canada. It's coming. It's, it's on the coming. W Network. It's coming. It's going to be everywhere. And speaking of your great authentic social media. <laughs> Where can people follow you on social media to keep up date with everything? Oh, you can follow my Instagram. It's Sarah Ilana. Instagram, Instagram, Twitter. I think it's all the same. Yeah. 
It's easy. See, or I'm not the Sarah as Thompson. As I should be. They'll find you. Sarah Thompson. They'll find you. Uh, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Don't ask science to Sarah Thompson and Peter Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.